In the previous video, we used a relatively small number of data points, 10 data points, to estimate a linear model for this experiment here of rolling x six-sided dice and take the total value. And that's fine, especially in this case, because we could easily generate more data if we wanted to test it. But in real life data analysis, often you have some fixed amount of data and there's no way to produce more data. And in that case, you don't really want to use all of the data when you're forming your model. Often you want to use some subset or some random sample of that data and then test it using the remaining data. So let's look at how to how to do that using this function I wrote in a previous video called rand sample. So remember how rand sample worked. I can do rand sample of 10, 4. Okay, and that's going to give me four randomly chosen values from the numbers 1 through 10 with no repetitions. And so how can we take advantage of that here? Well, I have these 10 data points and let's just choose some random sample of those. Let's choose five of them. So, and I'm going to use that to make my polynomial fit. So I'm gonna say V equals rand sample. Okay, I could do 10, five, but let's make it more robust by saying N and N over two. And I might get some errors if this is a decimal, I can't remember quite how I had it set up, the function set up, but it definitely makes more sense to have an integer in here. So let's use floor to get an integer. And that will, for example, turn 7.5 into seven. Okay, it always rounds down to the next lowest integer. If I ha start with seven, floor of seven is seven. So uh, this is going to randomly choose about half of the numbers from one up to n. It'll either choose half or one less than half, or I guess 0.5 less than half. And so now uh, let's get a subset of the data. So let's say x2 equals x1 v, and let's say y2 equals y1 v. Okay, so that's just going to be some subset of the data and let's use that smaller subset to generate the polynomial. And just for the fun of it, let's say this is a linear model, which we know is correct because up here the true uh, relationship between x and y is a linear relationship. But let's also try a cubic relationship and see how that looks. So instead of just having degree one, let's have degree three. Okay, and let's try plotting all of these things. So we're gonna plot the true data, okay, using all of the data, all 10 sample points. And here we're going to use this random sample of the data, of half of the data. And then let's do the same thing with the degree three. So degree three, and then evaluate the polynomial P3 at X2. Okay, so what I'm expecting to see here is three different things plotted. I'm expecting the original data points not connected. I'm expecting a linear model, and I'm expecting a cubic model all to be plotted on the same axes. So I've saved it. And now let's run it, dice script. Okay, and looks like kind of a mess. Why does it look like a mess? Well, let's remember what X2 looks like. Okay, X2 is not sorted. So we have some point with X coordinate two connected with a straight line to some point with X coordinate 14 connected with a straight line to some point with X coordinate three and so on. So let's go back to the original, original values and let's replace X two or let's make a new value x3, which is sort of x2. Okay, and I'm going to replace 
these values here. And you should ask yourself why it would not be correct to replace this x2 with x3, even if I put the x3 definition up before it. Okay, that's something you can think about for why that would not work. And let's try again. Okay, so that, that's looking, looking a little more interesting. Let's run it again. So let me delete this picture and run it again. Okay, so the two look very similar, but let me try to convince you that when we have the cubic model, that we're actually overfitting in a lot of cases. So I'm going to do this using a method of display, displaying four plots at once or displaying any number of plots at once called tiled layout. So here to get a tiled layout. So this is going to put two rows and two columns of plots. And then I'm going to make them up one at a time for i equals 1 to 4. Okay, and so that why that 4? Because I have space for four plots. Okay, and if I wanted to make this a little robust, maybe I should name these as variables, and then this should be the product of those two variables. And then let me indent all of this stuff. Okay, I just highlighted it and hit tab. And then to get from one tile of the like two by two grid of tiles to the next, I have to type something called next tile. And so this is just doing the same thing each time, but it's using a different random sample. So I've saved it, and now let's run it again. And let's do it one more time. Okay, this looks more like what I wanted. So notice how much variation there is in the different cubic models. So the linear models are what's in red, and the cubic models are what's in this yellow orangish color. Okay, this one that doesn't look like a straight line. And so uh, the fact that choosing different random samples of the data give us such different outcomes, that's a sign that we're overfitting this data.